play like this shows the time speed, it matches the play speed. And that's what you want. You want those two numbers to match up. What you see on film matches up those great numbers in the 40 yard dash. What's up, Browns fans? Time now for episode four of the Browns Breakdown. Nathan Zagur alongside the Athletics Draft Analyst, Dane Brugler. And today we look at the fourth pick of the Browns in this year's draft, a third rounder. They had two third rounders, Jordan Elliott and then Jacob Phillips, as they went SEC, 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 SEC on the first two days of the draft. Phillips was the leading tackler in the SEC, over 110 tackles a year ago. He had hardly any missed tackles at all, Dane, a sure tackler on the national championship defense. But the Browns love his instincts, his length, and his speed, which we'll take a look at here as we start to break down some of his tape. Yeah, yeah, you, you set it up perfectly. One of the best run defending linebackers uh, in this draft class. And a big reason for that, his ability to uh, key to attack run lanes before they develop. And this first play we have queued up third and one versus Vanderbilt. And you see Phillips here. He reads uh, the pulling tight end on this play. And that's what really gives him a chance to make that quick uh, you see him attack right away. He anticipates that cutback lane uh, that the running back is looking for because he is looking at that tight end pooling. And so he understands what the offense is trying to do. And he's so quick through the gap. He reaches the back three yards in the backfield, corralling that ball carrier, dragging him to the ground. Uh, now, yes, he was unblocked, but it's because of his play recognition, that ability to key and diagnose. So he attacks lane before that pulling tight end can do anything finds the ball carrier, those key and diagnose skills, putting himself in position to make a third down stop like that. That's what really shines about Phillips on tape. And the timing of it to know, all right, I just have to go way to beat, boom, and then explode, unblocked, untouched, and he kind of fits right through that gap. And as we said, sure tackler makes that play. By the way, as you see here in this end zone view, six, seven, eight, get used to those Browns fans. You got Jacob Phillips, six, Grant Delpit, R7, Patrick Queen, who is going to be a linebacker for the Baltimore Ravens, eight. They were the heart and soul of the national championship defense. At least we got two of them. That's good. But all three will be in the AFC North this year. All right, what else do we see from that we like from Jacob Phillips in the run game? And what else in terms of his ability, his speed, his movement skills? Yeah, and obviously on a play like this, you can see that speed, but also on this next play where you have to be able to cover sideline to sideline. And uh, here, uh, going up against uh, Georgia Southern, who is an option offense. And so he, you know, I know at the combine, he created a little bit of buzz with that 4 6, 6 40 yard dash at 230 pounds. But a play like this shows the time speed it matches the play speed. And that's what you want. You want those two numbers to match up. What you see on film matches up those great numbers in the 40 yard dash. And you can see it here on the outside, outside pursuit makes an option play like this, a no gain instead of a chunk play down the sideline. We can see Phillips here. He has outside contain. So he knows immediately he starts in that direction in the backfield. Uh, when it, defending the option, you know, you can always, you always have to be in motion because with your reads, you might be one step behind if you're just a step late. And that's what Phillips does here. He's well on his horse before the pitch has even been made. Uh, Calavion Chase on number 18, the defensive end, does his job, forces the quarterback to make that pitch. Uh, and then Phillips, uh, he does the rest. And you see Chase on here, defensive end. He's able to set the edge, force the pitch, and Phillips right there playing his man in position to make the stop, uh, winning the race to the corner. You see that outside speed. His ability, to, again, this also shows the instincts. He reads the run. He reads that outside uh, option play, but also the speed to chase it down and make a, make a stop. If he doesn't make this stop, it, it might be a race down the sideline. So big-time play by and showing the range and speed of the linebacker. And it certainly seems like once he gets his hands on you, you are going to the ground. But yeah, great speed. And that's what the Browns said. We like guys who are long and fast. And when you look at him, he just looks long, long arms, and able to get out there and make that play the closing speed, which really pops off the tape. Now, at LSU, their coverage linebacker was Patrick Queen, who ended up going uh, to the Ravens in the first round. Phillips was more the run guy. Coverage is something you're going to have to be able to do in the National Football League. He's got some skills there, but that's something that is going to have to be developed for him to be an every-down player with the Browns, who are looking at him more as that will linebacker compliment to the mic. Right, and it's not that Jacob Phillips can't cover. It's just we haven't seen him do it consistently enough at this point. Uh, 
Um, and so here on this play, you know, we, you know, on the first two plays we saw his ability versus a run, something that is going to make him an immediate NFL contributor in early downs. But what does he bring sub packages on passing plays? And so, you know, he diagnoses the run, rarely misses tackles. But where he needs to improve is a play like this. On this play, you could see Phillips. He's a little late deciphering the route combinations. Uh, needs a moment to turn and run with the tight end. And with LSU, they're running zone on a play like this. The offense, they identified a soft spot between the safety and the linebacker levels. This is where the offense, they see that soft spot, uh, soft spot in between six and seven where they're going to attack. And this is where Phillips needs to be a little more proactive going to that spot. The safety's in position uh, to make a play, but Phillips can do a little bit better job of making that a tougher throw, a tougher catch. And so uh, a, a guy, you can see the back pedal, it's a little choppy. He's just not as confident in his ability to read the pass like he is versus the run at this point. So not that he can't cover, it's just he needs a little more experience, he needs more opportunities uh, to play in coverage because I think he's going to improve. All the skills are there. A little bit of an unknown right now, but I think the talent is there to get better for a play like this. Yeah, and listen, this is a linebacker room that is young, that is full of opportunity. The only veteran, B.J. Goodson, with 29 starts. That's more than everybody else in that room combined. Mac Wilson started 14 games for you. And while there hasn't been a huge investment there, I'd also say you got a former third-rounder in Sione Takitaki entering his second year. Jacob Phillips is a third-rounder. I imagine if last year's draft was redone, Mac Wilson probably not a fifth-round pick if they were to go through that again. And so there is some young talent, but there will be an opportunity, I think, for Jacob Phillips to, to get on the field as a rookie, especially because of what he can do against the run. I agree. And I think his instincts, you know, we saw those first two plays. He's going to get on the field because those instincts are too good not to be out there. He'll make plays. It's just, you know, do you have to be careful how you deploy him? Can you trust him on passing downs? That's what, uh, you know, in training camp and when they get these guys on the field, could coaches will really be able to figure out. And I think getting him out there, there's, there are probably going to be a few times where he's going to have a misread or he's going to be late deciphering the route combinations. That's going to happen, which is, should be expected of all rookies. But this is a player who's going to get better because we talked about it, the length, the speed, the instincts. All those things are there, and I think he is going to get better. And I wouldn't be surprised if he outplays his uh, draft spot uh, if he does, because it's all going to come down to the coverage. If you can leave him on the field for all three downs, he's going to outplay that third round pick. And that's certainly what the Browns hope to see happen. Four down. We've got four more episodes of the Browns breakdown for you coming, so be sure to check them out. The next one, we'll take a look at a tight end that the Browns could not believe was on the board in the fourth round, and they felt they just had to pounce on him. For Dane Brugler, I'm Nathan Zagura saying thanks for joining us on the Browns Breakdown.